What was it we were talking about before I ended that episode? Oh yeah, the Matrix. Shit, damn it. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I know, I know, it was about the Matrix. Oh, I was talking about the whole like instant download thing of skills into the brain that they do, and it's just like if they can do this, why do they need training? Oh yeah. And because they like... want to incorporate cool fight scenes. <clears throat> That's why. I know the cool fight scenes are fine, and it's like I suppose they could use the excuse that hey. It's because they need to make sure that the download worked correctly and he's not going to start yodeling uncontrollably while, you know, doing the floss dance from Fortnite. I get that. Or I least... would have to, like, play Fortnite to get the joke. Which I'm not going to! Fair play. <laughs> ha! Finally, another real human being. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I have friends who play Fortnite, I am kidding. You can play Fortnite if you want, just respect that I don't. I could just imagine Logic getting chased by a shit ton of Fortnite fans with torches and pitchforks. <laughs> hey, fuck them, they'll never find me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Honestly, when, whenever I say something like that, when I write there, words, damn it. Words, Graham. brain, don't oh, work together. fuck! But, Whenever I say something like that or hear something like that, the first thing uh, I think of is like videos by Minilad or uh, people who've done videos with Minilad. <laughs> it's like people saying th things about a certain group and then saying they're, not, they're never going to watch this video. <laughs> doesn't matter. Like one of them did a joke about the Amish and the others were like, whoa, tone it down. He's just like, they're never going to see this video. What? Ah, shit. <laughs> War hero. <laughs> It's a joke. Damn. Stop grabbing me. It's inappropriate. Dude, come on. Don't grab the logic. We have to live with logic. Because logic is here. <laughs> <laughs> I regret absolutely nothing for saying that pun. I'm gonna get uh, comments like that like, Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! What's your name? Logic is yay! Your logic is logic is here! I can't word fucking today. Dude, I can't word ever. You're fine. <laughs> Damn, I jumped right honestly, between those two fireballs. That's awesome. Honestly, sometimes I'm surprised I can spell the. <laughs> Damn it! I got the fucking mushroom card. Oh well. Golden, stop being Ellie. Why did you say E L L I E? Shouldn't it be E L I? Yeah, you know that, that would just make spelling much easier. You know, it's the same thing with Safi with Sapphire Heart Song. I just call her Safi, but sometimes I put in two piece instead of one, and she's like, "Just put in Safi with one." It's like, all right. Oh fuck me! It's this bastard. Ah, oh, I hate this. Fruit. Ah, shit. Damn it! Oh god. Okay. Um. Oh. I actually thought I actually thought the entire no. map was Oh, I got eaten alive. Fuck. I forgot what those things are called. They're a pain in the ass. Are you talking about the fish? That giant fish that can eat you alive. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. Like... You know, I'm gonna go with that and see how that goes. Well, it's definitely not a cheap cheap. I can tell you that much. Get over here. Come on. Eat me. <laughs> It's only a matter of time before that bastard responds again. No! Oh! <sighs> well, that happened. Okay, Nightfall Stream says logic is here, logic is everywhere, logic, the logic and logic will break the fourth walls. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Son of a bitch! A fucking cheap cheap just jumped in and hit me. Why? Like, like, how do we how do I even respond to that? <laughs> 42? I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna try to time this right. What? Get over here. Walls were broken years ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Pinkie Pie broke the fourth wall. I'm just trying to put it back together again and failing miserably. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fit the pieces in. It's fucked, mate. Screw the fire flower, I just need to get past the stage. B 
Big Brother. That's what it's called. What the hell name is that? Like, I remember hearing it somewhere, but it's really hard to pronounce it. Ha! Eat fireballs, you motherfucker. Yeah, try eating me for lunch again, asshole. Hey, Big Buff is the name of Pinkie Pie's Super Party Cannon. From that one episode about the Celestia stage play. Huh. If you've seen that episode, which I hope you have, otherwise I just fucked up. No, I, I saw it. And I liked yeah. it. The scene yeah, that I remember so. the most is when Celestia is trying to, like, like iterate her lines. And she's being told to say a louder. And she goes to use the um, the Royal Cantaloupe voice. It is time for a new thing. I forgot what the line was. And the freaking students yeah. are, like, freaked out from it. Also, there is a problem I have, not with that episode itself, because despite certain issues I have with certain tropes I see in the episodes as of late, I like that episode. My problem is more with how people react to the episode. Is it because Celestia is in it? No, not that. It's because people make reference to the scene where the sun rises during the play because they don't have their fake sun for the play. And everyone says, oh, Celestia will do this here, but she won't do this in the movie. My I, my argument is this. What time is it? <laughs> it's, like, she, it's like, she could have been stalling the whole thing so that the sun would actually, it would be time to raise the sun by the time they got there. OBG Money, thank like, you very much for that. It is time for a new day in Equestria. God damn, I love that moment. Yeah. Anyways, you were yeah, saying. <laughs> yeah, it's just like people just assume that, oh, she's cheating by raising the sun earlier. And I was like, well, maybe she was stalling so she could raise the sun on time and save the play. But no one is like, everybody wanted to ride on their Celestia hate bonus, including DWK. Now, I love DWK. DWK is fucking hilarious. Does he not like Celestia? No, he... He pretty much likes all, I think he likes all of the prince. I think he likes all the characters. He doesn't do the whole judgment thing. It's only when a character actually has a reason to be disliked, like Discord. Discord, yeah, no, I saw his video about that and I can, I can get behind that. Yeah. Oh no, I have, I have my fair share of things to say about that one. Oh yeah, no, like Matter of Principles, God, that episode can go fuck itself. Yeah. In fact, let me transition onto that because honestly me rambling on about how people just assumed is kind of boring so i'll instead go on to a situation where everything is definitely not subtle and definitely not assumed now matter of principles oh boy get ready <clears throat> so what we have here is twilight being stupid again by putting someone in charge who clearly doesn't want to you know it's just like I can't run this school. Well, I don't really have a choice, and we have an episode to do, and we need a conflict, so do it. So, Starlight gets put in charge of the school. Okay, cool, right. And then Discord shows up, and I'm like, oh, okay. Time for some cool Discord hijinks, because I really liked this. I liked Discord. I was a big fan of Discord. He was a pretty cool character. And the whole thing with him fading away and in that one episode with Fluttershy when he was trying to be more normal, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. It is like, I like the character because the character was shown to, you know, they've given him a reason for being what he is, but he's willing to be that in a good way because the person he cares about doesn't want him to kill everyone. Yeah, no, I can get behind that. Like, the, the development that Discord had, it's just like, People argue saying, oh, it's Discord, he's meant to be a dick. Um, what about his progress in seasons five through seven? You're just knocking yeah. him back to square one for the sake of comedy? And not to mention how horrible he was to the kids. Yeah, and it's like, that brings me to the point in, in the sh like episode where he deliberately calls Starlight on her past as Pony Hitler. And it's just like, oh, you mean the person who you became friends with? technically saved the world with and has never actually done you any wrong and you are now being a colossal cunt for no real reason and i don't even get the satisfaction of an explanation as to why you're so bent out of shape at the end of the episode because hasbro fucking hates me no like, sorry about that the thing is that when it comes to the continuity it's it's really just the fact that um, they have a bunch of new writers and they get replaced with one another. It's because they're freelance writer, uh, writers. So 
they can't really keep up with consistency because they sometimes don't know much of the source material. I know, but surely someone in the staff, or even John Delancey himself, would sit there and say, would Discord really do this to this individual given the circumstances of their friendship? I'm not exactly sure if whether or not they would like, I know that they had to like write, like get ready for the script and like voice their lines, but I don't know if they're like in the proper like position or authority according to DHX to like see if whether or not they can quality check or call out issues with their characters that they're voicing. I mean, fair enough. But then there comes to, as you said, his treatment of the children and I make it a point to say it about this scenario and I'm able to reinforce it with to where I'm back again. But I'm going to come out and say it. If Starlight hadn't shown up when the bugbear was attacking the kids on the, like, outside gym course running track thing, they'd be dead. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee that Discord didn't have a qualm with letting that bugbear have a little snack during gym. Yeah, that, that really and the, sucks. And some people call me out on how I'm being a little bit dramatic. I immediately refer them to... No, to I like back again. No, I have like, to, you know, I have to agree with you about that because there are some like, things that characters have done that are so dangerous and people call out on that. But if you call out on what Discord's doing, it's kind of hypocritical that they would go against that. I know, and it's like the reason I the reason I refer people to to where I'm back again when they disagree is because keep in mind Discord didn't care half a damn about the changelings doing their thing until. To, until Starlight mentioned the Fluttershy had been kidnapped as well, so I'm also fairly confident that if Fluttershy was never kidnapped by the Changelings, Discord would have let them die in that hive. He would have let them rot away and fucking die in that hive. Yeah. As I'm looking back on it now, I'm a little bit less, oh, hey, it's Discord, cool chap, and I'm more like, wow, I literally cannot like this character anymore. This character has been ruined for me, and that upsets me. So yeah, that was a fun time. I, I, like, personally, I hope that, you know, they write him better in a future episode. Like, I'm willing to be, like, open-minded to give him another chance in future episodes. Which I can't, yes. unfortunately, say much about Diamond Tiara, because the staff never did anything with Diamond after Crusaders. I was I was about to make the whole who are we talking about again joke because like does she even exist anymore? No, like okay, she was like in the background every now and then, but ever since Crusaders of the Lost Mark, when they you know air quotes redeemed her, uh, they never did anything with her since then. And to me, like I took issue with Diamond being redeemed. Like you're now writing her character as someone redeemable. After, like, five years straight of making her static, and you're expecting me to just, like, go along with it. It has to take a lot more than that, and they never did anything about it since then. It's almost like her being a schoolyard bully was her only character trait, and now that that's gone, they can't do anything else with her. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that they can. I mean, I'd like them to try. Yes. And again, I could say that about everything I've witnessed thus far. I would like them to try. And I know they can, because as we both as we can both agree, some of the episodes in the season are definitely worth writing home about. Oh yeah, no. There have been some episodes that really pissed me off. Like I'm one of the people who hated the mod couple. I couldn't stand my briar. Oh hello. I think we're going to be very good friends. <laughs> oh, you hated him? Yeah, my boy. Okay, so, for me, Mudbriar is a bit of a mixed bag, because on one side, in the end where they got him to be, you know, sympathetic with Pinky to a degree, while maintaining this attitude and personality that can only be described as sandpaper rubbing against your dick. That's how painful it is. Damn. Just, like, I'm, yeah, that, I... <laughs> It's the only way I can describe it in a feasible manner. It's literally it's just like make a cone out of that shit and get rubbing because that's how it, that's how much he irritates me. It's like technically we've already met. Technically, I want to snap your damn head off like a liar. Yeah, no, like people are saying that uh, Pinkie Pie's overreacting, but when you really look at it, she was trying to be feasible and civil with him. Like she's like, okay, so we had a bit of a bad start because you took up my time which I needed to try to get the next gift for my sister. 
and you know he she's willing to try to restart everything like let's start things from the beginning technically we've already met it's like oh my god you know yeah as a, a lot of people compared him to sheldon from big bang theory and like yeah maybe in voice oh, damn it. that's about it is like i'd equate him i would equate him more to an actual stick static bland not a lot to him no like they try to like the episode tries to establish that both mod and um and Mudbriar like the same person but when you really think about it a lot of things more has sensitivity yeah and no the there's yeah there's more of an integrity compared to what Mudbriar has and Mudbriar's just like oh yeah so he makes uh, mod happy but don't you think that he should be considered with others and not just like doing the same thing over and over again i get that his trait of that is what got you know mod together but sometimes some people need to call out on his behavior i mean the whole episode is trying to put Pinkie Pie in the wrong, but to an extent, she has every right to be pissed off. Yeah. In fact, I, in fact, when Wolf had actually talked to me about the episode, he told me that the episode was pretty much 22 minutes of fuck you, Pinky, and that upset him about the episode. Also, speaking of painting characters to look bad, um, Friendship University. Oh, Jesus. Yep, they firmly established. Yeah, they firmly established that. Uh, that <sighs> that character. I forgot his name. Um, you talking about Naysay? Yeah, Naysay. Like, nope. They they make him a complete xenophobic or racist. It's like, congratulations, writers. You made him completely unlikable in a forceful way. Yeah. So when they eventually reform him, no one's going to buy it. I'm just not going to care. Like. You know, I, I feel as though they're going to probably put it as this. He'll probably be in a lot of trouble, and the student six will probably try to save him, and they'll feel like he'll start to rethink his actions. That's what I'm willing to bet what's going to happen for, like, the season finale. Hmm, yeah. I wouldn't hold my breath, though, because they do the unexpected thing in technically the wrong way, I've noticed. Oh, yeah? Well, I know what, make, what would make you hold your breath. What was that? Being underwater. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But yeah, Friendship University for me was the pinnacle of not so much pain as makes me want to cause myself pain by cutting my hand up on the resulting shards of my monitor when I punch my fist right through the damn thing. Because... Obviously, they've got Naysay being unnecessarily racist because we need a villain and we've shown that Chrysalis is pretty damn useless. But, like, even after that, they have the whole flim and flam thing and then they establish a sort of, okay, so every character who's not a main character has this sort of stupidity, amnesia, syndrome, disease thing whenever they're in the presence of an obviously bad person. And it was like, oh, the princess of friendship isn't very friendly. Yeah, because her one character trait is supposed to be her being infinitely friendly or wise or sage or likes everybody in spite of their flaws. You can't stick to a lot of things that people identify as. You're going to have these character flaws and they're going to be confronted with them. That's what makes them more human. Yeah. Also, for this next bit, I have to give you some context. Snickerman, aka Jackalrock, is the chillest person I know. There is virtually nothing in the world that could bother him beyond something extremely personal like family. You know, like step to his family, he'll step on you and make you disappear. That sort of thing. Oh yeah, that's right. The finale aired somewhere in another country. Hmm. Yeah, imagine my surprise when Starswell showed up in the Friendship University, that actually got Snick to leave the rabbit room and ditch the episode completely. That scared me, <laughs> because he doesn't do that. Yeah, I was also relatively pissed that they decided, hey, so, um, Starswell isn't an idiot and an arsehole this time, he's an idiot who trusts people a little bit too much. So he's the complete opposite of what he was in Shadowplay. He, he's because... an idiot and uh, gullible. Got it. Yeah. There's like, I already have a hard time liking Starswell because he dislikes Twilight. 
even though she explained that she thought she was doing the right thing, dismissed her at every turn, and took every opportunity to make her feel small. You know, my favorite kind of people. But then in this Fuck. episode, he's shown to be an absolute moron completely. Hey, it it's says like, gullible on the ceiling. No, oh, so I die, you stole my lungs. Oh, uh -huh, you stole my horn. God, I got that frog suit is going to sit there. You know what? I'm probably going to go with that, and then I'm going to go with... There we go. Oh, Ask Solar, do you have any top six favorite Pokemon from Gen 1? Oh, boy. Um... That's something even I can't answer, because it's like, well, fuck. As long as they're fucking, like, powerful, I can, I can live with it. Funny thing, my favorite Pokemon in, like, the entirety of Pokemon is and will always be Eevee. I mean, from Gen 1, obviously the three starters. I feel like the... Gen 1 is, like, one of the only generations where I had difficulty choosing between a starter because every... In pretty much every other generation, I've always gone with the grass type because they've always appealed to me. But the thing about Gen 1 is, like... Because the main thing about grass types and, like, grass starters in most of the Pokemon games I've noticed is that they generally tend to be, like, reptilian in design, and I fucking love reptiles. But, uh, the thing about Gen 1 is... All of the starters were reptilian in design, so I was like, oh, well, <laughs> shit. So, obviously, yeah, like, the three starters are taken up half of Fuck. it immediately. But, uh, yeah, the other three are going to be a bit more of a, an issue. Mainly because I don't really remember that much about Gen 1, so I'll probably say something that's like, Oh, that's actually Gen 3.5, you moron. God, you call yourself a Pokemon fan or some shit like that? Oh, God, it's one of those who are like... Who are... I, I, I'm not saying that's what it's going to be like, but I, I know for a fact I'm probably going to fuck it up, so oh. I'm going to do some fucking research. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're talking about Toxic fans. You're, you're talking about those people. Oh, so yes. Gen 1, wouldn't he? I believe I've already spoken my mind about... Nope, Tyrannosaur like, was Gen 2. Fandoms. Never mind. Just kidding. Actually, Gen 2. See, What's up? I already fucked it up. I just ate it. Uh, do you even know what kind of pill that is? I think it's a painkiller. I'm gonna find out. Jesus fucking Christ, That's... Peter. That's... Yeah, no, like... <laughs> you, I, I'm gonna I, you, you probably to heard... slow your roll right there. What? You, you probably heard Solar right there, didn't you? I didn't. No, he said, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, basically. <laughs> nice, I found a pill. I'm going to eat it. I'll let you know what it is in a moment. Let's see. Season level comes. Let's see. Golden Fox. I'm probably going to kill you and others in the stream, <laughs> but I've never played a Pokemon game. Um, okay. So you're going to you kill me? So you, 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 you're you going to try to murder me because you never played a game that I talked about. No, I think he means it's going to... I know what she meant. She got. She kind of got the terms backwards. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it, I think she means like cause a heart attack or something. It's oh. like, it's like, oh my god, you can't be it dies. No, like as is, like there's different generations of games that I grew up with compared to what everybody else had. Like earlier, I was asking like which worlds are the favorites. That a lot of people have not grown up with this game. I'm like, oh, all right, fair enough. Hmm. I and think the first Mario game I ever played was either Mario 64 or Mario Kart on the 64. Ooh. Ah, oh, Mario Kart 64. God, such fun memories. Yeah. I especially love their uh, version of the Rainbow Road theme. Oh, God, don't get me started there. Oh, it was so Velvet good. Blossom asks, is it alright to post links? I think if I remember yeah, right, you you're can... not... Yeah, you're, you're not super strict on links. So yeah, no, I'm not. Post a link, you're gonna be banned immediately. I'm just kidding. Post a link. <laughs> you could <can> share it. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, but I remember Fucking Generation hey. One. There were a lot. There were not a whole lot of them that I enjoyed uh, from Generation One. It was mainly a. Uh, I remember I did like Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn was Generation 1. That much I do know. Uh, Onyx I also thought was pretty cool, mainly because I watched the fucking anime and I saw Onyx take down a giant robot and I thought that was pretty fucking sweet. Uh, <laughs> what else? 
Now I gotta figure out the fucking last one that I like. Alright, come on. Let's let these stupid things roll by. <laughs> what? I guess if I were to say the last one, uh, yeah, unironically, uh, Pony's Mouth. That one was oh, cool. damn it! It's, oh, God. it's a horse with a flaming mane. What more could okay, you so, want? Um, yeah, this link that this link that the person posted i'm yeah. in the situation where i get the joke but i don't get the joke like half of me still needs to catch up mm. okay so cute charm basically i can't remember the specifics of it i i know it gives you like a negative debuff if you are fighting a pokemon of the opposite gender i think it like it either lowers your attack or like it makes you um likely to not hit Either or, it's just annoying to deal with. And then Oblivious is also is basically, oh yeah, I'm immune to that. Finally. <laughs> oh wow. Because it, the Oblivious trait is like, um, yeah, I don't recognize this chick that's flirting with me. So yeah, it doesn't affect also, me at all. Also, even though I didn't keep up with the Pokemon games after a while, because honestly, my heart was torn apart by Pokemon Mystery Dungeons. And I played Pokemon Platinum, so I've technically played them all. Um, I did keep up with the anime a few times, getting in and out of it over the course of years and stuff. Diamond and Pearl was one of my favorites. Though looking back, I can, like, it's weird. It's like, if you watch something, then you go and see a bunch of other people's perspective on something, and then you look back on it. A lot of people probably wouldn't think any differently because it's their opinion, but for me, once I've seen how the world sees something, I have a bit of a clearer lens on it, hmm. if that makes sense. Because I watched this video about how like, all of the problems with Diamond and Pearl by this guy who brought up a whole bunch of stuff, and one of the topics they got onto is Dawn from Diamond and Pearl was overly sexualized for a 10-year-old, and then I went and looked back, she's like, Oh, yeah. I can actually see that now. Hmm. Mm. Well, in the meantime, I think it's time I call this an episode and take a little break and then get to the next episode. So I'll see you guys then. Yeah.